So there are two words that really rub us parents up the wrong way. I'm bored and it's school holiday, so we've heard this a substantial amount of time. Our first instinct is to drop what we're doing and to try and create something for them to do. But that may be doing them more harm than good. Joining us in the coffee group today, AUT lecturer Dr Simon Walters and drama teacher Charlotte Nightingale. Good morning, guys. Morning. Morning. Firstly, hey. Simon, let's start with you. What exactly is free play and why is it so important? Uh, free play is basically just letting the kids play on their own. It's not adult controlled, structured and regulated. And uh, we did a, a survey of 2,000 parents nationwide to find out what they felt about free play. And we called it real play, mm -hmm. if you like. And they were really concerned about the lack of time that kids spent in engaged in free play. But they didn't have any strategies and how to help try to help them to do that. Yes, yeah. well that's the thing, we want them to play more freely but then as soon as they say I'm bored, it's like a little alarm bell goes off mm. in our heads and we that's want to right. stop them. Yeah. Um, Charlotte, do you think kids are struggling a little bit to use their imaginations these days? I think it's, it depends on the age of the child really. Um, in kindergarten and early childhood, the whole, the whole kind of curriculum is based around play-centred learning. So mm. I find with the students I teach who are, who are from, from age three to five, they're, they're creative, their imagination is amazing. But when they get to school, because obviously the, the, you know, it changes, teachers are pressured to make sure that the kids are reading and writing and doing their maths, then sort of imagination and creative play takes a back seat. So I think definitely yes in the preschoolers, but then as they get older and older, it actually lessons and lessons yeah devices must play a bit of a role in this lack of free play as well Simon yeah we found that um, it's over 80% of kids are spending at least two hours a day on their devices and that's not doing homework and things like that mm. and more than 50% are spending more than four hours a day so it's, it's a real concern probably the biggest barrier to getting kids active is the amount of time they spend on devices yeah and it's a hard thing to get them off when they get a little bit older and they can mm. look at their ways around it yeah. so shall, shall we just let them say I'm bored and go all tough well, I mean, should... only boring people are bored. <laughs> I've tried that line before. Oh, well, my, my late grandfather always used to say there's no such thing as boredom. And I actually totally agree with that. Even this weekend, you know, we've had a... Um, we had a great weekend and I went to my parents' um, batch and my children, we have no devices there, and we said, and my son was saying, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. There's no Wi-Fi. Yeah, oh there's no Wi-Fi, what can I do? I need to play on the PlayStation. <laughs> Within 20 minutes, they were on the beach, they had sticks in their hands, they were playing, uh, making an army camp. It was great. So I think that you do have to let them sort of work through that boredom of 10 minutes and then they'll find their own sort of things to play with. Tune out the bleating for a while. Yeah, totally. I think you have to do that, definitely. So, Simon, when kids do get the hang of the free play should we hold back or should we join in I mean how should we play it I think we need to encourage them to actually play themselves but we worked with three families on the North Shore of Auckland and um, the, the, it was during the school holidays and the families and the parents got involved with the kids and what was interesting at the end of it they didn't spend any money they just went out in their own neighborhood went to the bush and they, they did activities built sort of tree huts and they all said the kids and the parents are the best holidays they'd ever had and they hadn't spent any money. Yes, yeah. and they're not spending money is a That's really right. good yeah. thing, yeah. Oh, particularly Definitely. in this day and age. It's a really good thing. Definitely. So what are some of the potential costs of not allowing children enough free play? Do you both have firm ideas about what this could be? Um, I think that, that creativity and imagination and, and sort of improvisation, what we do in a drama context, yeah. is really good for lots of different things in child development. Um, you know, building uh, relationships, social interaction, uh, emotional resilience, things like that. In fact, my, my middle son, who has a disability, um, has lots of anxiety at the moment, and, and his <laughs> occupational therapist said, do you know what, Charlotte, you should do some role play with him. And I was like, anyway, oh, excuse yes. me. Excuse me, I'm a drama, <laughs> I'm a drama teacher. teacher, I can do that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Yeah, and actually it really really helps just working through those situations and it's great for problem solving mm. you know we as parents are problem solvers we you know our child can't hold their bag at school we hold it for them so you know we need to step back I think and let them kind of problem solve themselves and that's what free play and open-ended play is all about sometimes we do anything for a quiet life what do you we think do. Simon no I totally agree it's, mm. it's the lack of creativity if you're everything's structured for you all the time um, when do you learn to take risks you're not allowed to ride bikes, climb trees, and get outside and get mm. muddy. So w when you start taking risks, or when you're a teenager, maybe you sort of start alcohol or driving a car, mm. and that's a dangerous time for kids to learn how to take risks. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, it is. You're absolutely yeah. right. And it's always a tough thing for a parent to step back and watch their children fall out of a tree. But mm. they're not necessarily yeah. going to fall out yeah. every yeah. single time, are no. they? And it's important for them to try and, and to learn um, their own boundaries and what they can do. You know, it's really important for, for that, mm. you know. So finally, what would be a great piece of advice from both of you on getting kids to get more involved with free play? You first, Simon. 
It's the devices. I, I, I read a book by Nigel Larder because I've got teenage girls, raising yeah. teenage oh, girls. Good luck with and, that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got the raising teenage boys one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, his advice was pick your battles. Mm. And I think we talked about how difficult it is to get them off the devices, but that's a battle that you want to pick and you want to win. Yeah. OK, mm. good idea. And I'm really, I like giving starter activities for kids. So, you know, that kind of I'm bored thing. Often I sort of maybe say, OK, let's let's um, set up the lounge as, a, as an, an, an aircraft and let's, let's play as if we're on an aeroplane and I can be the passenger and be really passive <laughs> and you can be the cabin crew and, you know, do, you know, problem solve that way. So I think giving starter activities is a really good way of getting kids to get yep. really creative and... Give it, give yeah, it, oh, that's yeah. your coffin, but like there. That's give right. them on. <laughs> Charlotte, Simon, thank you so much. You can take me your own cup of tea. I'm going to take my coffee. <laughs>